Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is about vitiligo. It's something, it's a condition that is more obvious for skin of color because when you have white patches that tend to develop, there's more of a stark contrast next to the melanated skin right beside the white patch. I do think it psychologically affects the skin of color community more than Caucasians. And I have been asked to do this video many times so finally we're sitting down and talking about it and I'll also be talking about the newer therapies that might be worth investigating as well. So if that sounds good to you give me a thumbs up let's dive right in. Okay, so first of all, what is vitiligo? Vitiligo is an autoimmune condition whereby your normal immune cells attack healthy skin cells. Those healthy skin cells are your melanocytes. The melanocytes are the cells that produce the pigment melanin. This is what makes skin of color have skin of color. And so when your immune cells attack and kill the melanocytes, you no longer produce any pigment in that area and it turns completely white. It's not not a faded color, it turns completely white. And there is a stark difference between the melanin skin and the vitiligo area. So to the point you could even draw a line, it's a discrete border, it's not a diffuse border. So that's one of the ways to visually see that it's vitiligo. You do need to keep an eye on vitiligo because there are going to be some questions that your doctor is going to ask and you want to be as informed about your skin as possible. So I would document the rate of new lesion formation so this will so if you said for example there's a new patch that's developed you know once every week or write it down basically as a journal as you go along so that will help you assess the rate of um, progression of the condition the second thing I would say is look to see if any patches have ever repigmented. Re That's a really important question that your doctor is likely to ask you and that you're only gonna know the answer if you have been assessing and examining your own skin. Also pay attention to treatments. So after treatment has the vitiligo improved or have any treatments not worked at all? Um, and again, everybody's skin is different and so everyone's answers are going to be different and you're only going to know those answers if you know what the questions are. So that's why I'm basically setting the groundwork for you when, it, when you do eventually, if you decide to go and see a doctor about it. Treatment of vitiligo is notoriously difficult and stubborn. So in the past, we've always used steroids, topical steroids, either as a cream or as an ointment. And it is basically an anti-inflammatory. It's quite good, but there are side effects with it. The side effects being thinning skin. And so you don't really want to be on a strong topical steroid for years, but it's good if you're having an acute bout of um, vitiligo and it's spreading quickly and you almost want to minimize um, the progression. The other option are NSAIDs. So, so those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And often what people tend to do is to alternate between NSAIDs and steroids because NSAIDs don't give you the same side effects you get with steroids. It doesn't thin the skin. A good example of this would be calcineurin inhibitor. So the next upgrade to steroids and NSAIDs is phototherapy. So phototherapy tends to be that you go in two to three times a week for about five to 10 minutes and narrow band UVB rays tend to be used. I think it's not ideal um, just because even from the convenience of it to uh, have to go in two to three times a week for a short period of time really does disrupt your week, but also, you know, results do vary. Another therapy you can look at is oral or topical JAK inhibitors, JAK. It has to be done under medical supervision. And it's basically an anti-inflammatory specifically for vitiligo. Now, the next stage up from this would be surgical treatment. And these are slightly newer treatments. So the one that we've been using for a long period of time are tissue grafts. This is basically where the whole skin is grafted from a pigmented area and put and transplanted into the non-pigmented area. The newer therapy, however, is called cellular grafting. And this is when a culture of melanocytes are taken from 
one area which is populated and is pigmented and then placed and transplanted into the non-pigmented area. So I looked into the surgical uh, treatments more for you because it is new and information is constantly changing. Um, and I don't think enough people are talking about these potential therapies that um, I've seen to be very effective, especially cellular grafts, which um, even someone very close to me has used and has been very happy with the results. So let's go into some of the um, pros and cons of each so you have a little bit more idea. This is not your full research video. This is just to introduce you to different newer treatments for vitiligo so that you can, you have a starting place for when it comes to further research. So when it comes to tissue grafts, it has been done for longer. It's not a new procedure. Um, it's more widely available. You do need to have strict bed rest afterwards, four or five days. There are more post-operative complications. However, it is also a cheaper procedure and is also a relatively quick procedure compared to cellular grafts. As cellular cultures and cellular grafts um, are newer, there's a longer learning curve for training staff. It takes longer because also to culture melanocytes can take weeks. It tends to have less post-operative complications, but on the downside, it isn't as widely available because it is newer. Also, we don't have as many long-term studies as you do with the other forms of treatment for vitiligo. With all of these, they all have their pros and cons. Um, and I think it really, it comes down to you. Number one, how much is it affecting you? What is the the psychological side of the condition for you. Some people, you know, absolutely not bothered by it and you have a great quality of life. Other people, it it can affect them. And so I think you also have to gauge that before you decide which sort of treatment to go for. You may decide ca camouflage makeup is the best way forward. You know, it doesn't interrupt your lifestyle too much and it's something you can do quite quickly. But again, you know, it comes down to individual choice. Don't forget, I'm in the comments section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Please do write down which other videos you want me to make for you. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color down below too. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Dr. Mita Rattan, skincare by Dr. V, and also on TikTok, which is Dr. Mita Rattan. Thank you so much. Bye.